Good morning everybody and welcome to my channel. My name's Elaine and I'm Ellie Welly Stitcher both here on YouTube and also over on Instagram and welcome back if you're a returning viewer. It's really nice of you to come and visit with me again and if you're new here thank you for giving up some of your time to come over and watch me. So as you can see I haven't moved. No I have not moved house yet so we were due to move on the 19th of september so last week today's saturday uh didn't happen um yeah so it's just a waiting game at the minute i'll go into the life update later on because i know some of you aren't really interested in my what i get up to <laughs> when i'm not stitching so I'll, I'll give you a life update at the end but i have not moved yet so we are back in my normal stitchy spot. I haven't even bothered packing anything in here yet. So there you go. So it's been four weeks since I last filmed. I thought it would be a while because I was expecting to move house. Um, and I haven't. So I thought, do you know what? I'm going to film a video today just to give you a bit of an update. I've got quite a lot of stitching to show you. I have got a finish. Um... I've got where I am with Whipgo for this month. The numbers haven't been called for next month yet, so I haven't really got much around immediate plans to talk about. Uh, however, I have got quite a lot of haul to show you and stitchy kindness because last weekend uh, I went to the Essex Needles retreat. Um, I have got some a separate little video of the finishing table. Um, which I'm going to put on at the end of this video for anybody who's interested to see that uh, and just a couple of pictures that I took at the retreat um, so I'll, I'll show you those at the end for anyone who's interested uh, I know that a couple of other people have already either talked about the retreat or I know um, Lindsay from Blushing Pink Stitches she did a little vlog of the whole um, retreat and kind of went round and showed what people were stitching on, etc. And she did take some footage of the brag table, which is better than mine. And if you want a quick whiz through, then go and watch uh, Lindsay's little video. Teresa's also filmed a video, Teresa Little Stitcher. Um, she hasn't put that on yet because she's gone away on holiday today. So... And it's her birthday too, so happy birthday for today, Teresa. Right, before I waffle on any longer, let's get into it, shall we? It's a really nice day here. It's really sunny, but it's quite... There's a little bit of an autumnal chill in the air, I have to say. Um, my stitching plans changed a little bit over the course of the last couple of weeks because we had a heat wave, people. Would you believe it? We had a heat wave. It suddenly went up to like 30 degrees. And some of the plans I had for what I was going to stitch on um, changed as a result of that. So I'll explain why as we go along. Right, let's get into it. So I'll start with showing you my book of days. And then from there we'll go into uh, all of the other stuff. So this is how I last filmed on the 26th of August and I said to you at that particular time that I thought there was no reason why I um, wouldn't film for the entire month and I did. So that was how August ended up for me. So quite pleased with um, the fact that I stitched every day. Uh, and so far for September and we're a fair crack into the month now, aren't we? So, um, you know, we've only got a week left, September. Where's that time gone? Um, this is where I am for this month. So I haven't not, I've had a couple of days where I didn't stitch this month for a variety of reasons, really. So um, here we go with my book of days for September. Somebody did ask on my last video, there was a comment about where did I get this or what was this book that I'm using? Um, and this is Needlework Press um, Book of Days. 
you I mean it's way late in the year now to be probably thinking about it for this year but I think they normally release the following year as well about the end of October time and it's widely available in uh, certainly in needle workshops in the US um, I know one two three stitch stock it uh, and they have still got this one in stock if you were to want to go and purchase this year's one. Um, in the UK, Peakside Needleworks carry some of these, as do the Patchwork Rabbit, uh, which you can pre-order, I do believe. So, um, so yeah, so that's Needlework Press's Book of Days for the lady that asked me what I was using as a planner. And for me, this is the only planner I have ever managed to stay up to date with i know some people don't like it it's not comprehensive enough for them but for me it's perfect i only have to jot a few things in it i, I will never ever be able to keep up with i did have a, an electronic cross stitch planner I, I think i got it off of the um apple app store and but it was really comprehensive it gave you inventories of where you could put your floss where you could put your patterns um, you know your stock inventory of what you've got stash inventory um, as well as your whips and progress but honest to goodness brilliant if you're a really organized person and uh, and you love to have all that that information particularly obviously electronically it's easy to keep up with it but it was just too much information for me I just want to know what I've stitched on each day um if it's full coverage, I put in how many stitches I've done because it's in Pattern Keeper. If it's a paper pattern, I don't. Um, or if it's one that I've got in good notes, I don't. Um, but yeah, I had a couple of days where I didn't stitch. Uh, I can't remember why one of them I didn't stitch. Honestly, can't. It was a Thursday and I think I might might have just been a bit too tired. Um, and I didn't stitch one Monday. Don't know why either. I probably was a bit too tired. But every other day I have stitched. Um, like I said, I've had a finish, so I'm going to show you that now. And um, I've also had two new starts. <laughs> One finish, two new starts. Oh well, it is what it is, isn't it? So um, let's start with my finish. I don't. I don't know. This looks a little bit dull. Hold. Hold on a minute, I'm just going to pause this video and see if I can make it, the lighting look a little bit better. I don't like putting my ring light on because I don't like the glare on my glasses. And if I didn't have my glasses on, I wouldn't be able to see anything. So, um, you know, but I know I don't want the reflection too much on my glasses. Like I say, it is bright and sunny outside, but it just feels a little bit dark in here. Bear with me one second while I try and sort it out. Okay, I think that is slightly better, slightly better. Right, okay, let's get into it. So, starting with my finish, and I did say on my last video that I thought I might have a finish with this one this time, and I have, ta -da! Um, So, uh, this is, excuse me, the Scarlet um, House, oh, Lane, get a grip, sort yourself out. So this is by the Scarlet House um, and it is the Strawberry House. And um, I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And this is what it looks like finished. I'm really pleased with this. I so enjoyed stitching this. I really, really did. Um, and it's such a summery stitch. The colours in it are lovely. They're all gentle arts threads. Um, and I really, really am pleased. There is an error on this. Um, <laughs> or an Elaine personalisation on this. So I, somehow or other, I, I went a bit... I missed a stitch um, around here somewhere. And, you, and so when I came down to do the vase, I was like a stitch out or half a stitch out. And I thought, do you know what? I'm not going back. <laughs> like I'm not unpicking all this for the sake of like half a row of stitching. So 
I, I, um, I fudged it and, and it doesn't notice, it looks fine. This is stitched on a uh, 40 count Hemingway by Needle and Flax, which is an absolutely lovely linen and I've got plenty left to do another small on this. Um, and normally I'm terribly wasteful with fabric, but I, I've, I've got a bit left to play with, with this one. So I'm not going to frame this one just at the minute. Uh, uh, this is joining cow pile in my finishing the pile, which I do normally like to completely finish things as I go along. But I've packed a lot of my finishing stuff up um, for when we do move. So this is going to have to wait now until after I've moved. I have still got my sewing machine out. I could, but yeah, all my um, backing fabrics, my finishing fabrics, and my trims are all put away so and this will be a pillow but I so I really enjoyed stitching this little chart I really did and I'm very very pleased with the way it's come out so so that is another finish for this year very very happy with that but I'm gonna shove that over there out of the way okay what else have I worked on when I started pulling it all out I thought Blimey, four weeks worth of stitching actually is pretty good. Okay, so um, I'll show you the two full coverage projects that I've worked on and then I've got a bit of everything else, basically. So, um, the first one I, I worked on, and I would only did one stitchy, stitchy session on this one, um, and this is a chart by Pain Free Crafts and the artwork is by Chris Dunn. Uh, and this is Feast and I will put a picture in of where you saw it last time and what it looks like when it's finished. And I put 310 stitches into this one one evening um, just because I fancied swapping out and doing a different um, chart. So here I am with Feast now. So I've almost, almost finished filling in this hair. I've just got a little bit of his nose left to fill in. And then I'm going to come down here and kind of meet this bit up and then move move on a bit um because i think i think i told you last time i think under here we've got a bit of a red squirrel that comes into play as well this is stitched on 28 count easy guide and it's one over one full cross which is um perfect for for this piece because there's lots of confetti stitching in this and don't get me wrong because I, I don't mind a bit of confetti stitching i have to be in the mood for it but um yeah I, I really don't mind a bit of confetti but i am glad i went one over one on this instead of tent stitch because i think you know cheese delivery is looking a bit like a rug and this one is not as bad uh, at all so yeah there's lots of detail in this and i really love it it's just a brilliant picture i really love it so yeah so that's feast so it's only had one day of stitching, but you know, that's another 310 stitches into it. So I'm quite pleased with that. Right. The only other full coverage I've worked on this month so far is cheese delivery. So oops, I have put this one back in the queue snaps again now, chaps. So um, you probably won't see it out of a queue snap now until it's finished. This is my focus piece at the moment. Uh, so this is also by Pain Free Crafts and like I say it's called Cheese Delivery and the artwork again is by Chris Dunn. I know there's a bit of a theme here. Um, I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. And uh, this is what it looks like now. So since I last saw you, 
uh, I've put another 4,000 stitches into this one. So I haven't quite finished my 5,000. My aim with this one is to do 5,000 stitches a month and I've only done four at the moment, partly because um, the Essex Needles Retreat last weekend, I didn't take this one with me. A few people were like, where's cheese delivery? And I said, you're not seeing it until it's finished. <laughs> And partly because, yeah, there's a, I'm on a bit of confetti stitching at the minute. So um, Lauren from Flossibilities has stitched this, finished it. I know lots of you that watch me watch Lauren as well. So you will have seen her brilliant finish of this. Um, but she left a comment for me on, I think, my last video saying, oh, you're just coming up to like doing the um, the railing. And that is some heavy confetti stitching. Oh, yeah. You weren't wrong with that one, Lauren, were you? <laughs> so I have to do... I hope you can see this. Okay, so the, the this railing along here and down here, which is a bit I'm kind of working on at the minute. Yeah, that, that's kind of two stitches here, one stitch there, two stitches here. Yeah, we're in a proper heavy confetti area with that at the minute. So I have to do a bit of that and then I've been going back and doing, bringing these cheeses along as well. I did come over and work on this side just for one evening. I think I put a couple of hundred stitches in over here just, just to get away from that railing, if I'm honest. And then I thought, no, you can't chicken out from it, Elaine. You need to go back and get that railing done. So... This uh, is stitched on 28 count, easy guide, but this one I am doing two over one tent stitch. But yeah, we, we are not doing too bad with this one. I have now completed 110,600 stitches on this piece. So roughly we've got about 14,000 stitches to go. Yeah, it's not many, is it? um well in the grand scheme of things it's not many uh and i am just under 90 percent complete 90 percent i think uh yeah my next stitchy session on this one i will hit the 90 percent mark so so yeah I, I so today we are on what the 23rd of september so i've still got a week stitching on this one to get to my 5,000 stitches for the month and i'll do that um yeah, so I, I, like, I've kind of neglected all of my other full coverage in favour of this one at the moment because I really do want to get it finished um, and hopefully up on a wall in my new house. <laughs> Fingers crossed. So, yeah, that's cheese delivery. Okay. So, let's get into some of my other stitching. So it has been sampler September and I told you in my last video that I had a bit of a plan to kind of at least touch all of the samplers that I've got on the go um, at the moment. I haven't quite achieved that yet. I've got a few to go if I really want to achieve that by the end of September. Um, but I have picked up yeah, I had been stitching on a few samplers. One of my whip go numbers was to stitch on a sampler for five days this month, and I've done that already. Um, so the first one I picked up to stitch on was my long dog sampler. Um, so I hadn't stitched on this one for a little while. So this one is Clan Fair PG. Um, again, like I say, by Long Dog Samplers. I'll put a picture in of what it looks like when it's finished and where you saw it last time. And last time you saw this one, it was out of the Q-snap. I've put it back in the Q-snap this time, guys. Um, so... I'll show you what I've done since you last saw it. Um, I'm trying to think what I have done since you last saw it. I think I've put in this spoon over here. Um, 
I've, I've got back stitching to do I know I've put in a couple of the smaller spoons as well um, so yeah we, we are kind of the, the bottom of the piece is down here and I've been working over this side predominantly I'd already got this big one in here I still need to go back and back stitch this one um, but yeah I have put in some of the smaller spoons around it uh, so yeah I, I'm really pleased with the way this one's coming along we're well over 50 percent on this one now well over can't remember exactly where I'm at I might be 60 odd percent um, I'm stitching this one on 28 count knocks um, which is an, an even weave as opposed to a linen actually this is by Chromatic Alchemy and I am stitching this one in silks uh, so I am using dinky dye silks predominantly um, so we have dinky dyes um, Robin's Egg is the blue this pale blue then this grey is Ghost Gun by Dinky Dyes. Then we have this almost white grey is um, Quicksilver, also by Dinky Dyes. And then the variegated that you can see is um, by x Designs. Again, it is a silk and it's called Peacock Fuchsia. So yeah, I hadn't had this one out for a little while and um, I kind of want to crack on with it a bit because I have a new long dog waiting in the wings <laughs> so yeah uh, that had one stitchy session on it so we've got a little bit of progress on that one I really do need to bite the bullet and go back and do um, some of the back stitching because I don't want to leave it all to the end you get quite a lot of back stitch in um, the long dogs so yeah I'm quite pleased, quite pleased with how that's coming along. Right, um, next one. So the next one that I'm going to show you was one of my Whipgo numbers for September. I took this one to uh, the Essex Needles retreat with me and I think I did about 30 stitches on it realized I'd made an error I hadn't made an error at the retreat but I had made an error um, and the lovely Susie Perso that was sat next to me volunteered to frog it out for me <laughs> she said you're just gonna I said oh I've made a mistake I said oh, I'm gonna put it away I've made a mistake and she said no don't put it away because you won't pick it up again give it to me and I'll frog it tell me where it's wrong and I'll frog it for you so she did so thank you Susie um, everybody needs a Susie in their lives when it comes to frogging believe me okay so uh, this is awesome by the Cricut collection and my um, whip go number was number 15 which was a stitch on an autumn project for five days so it felt appropriate I've only done four days on it so far so I've still got one more day to go um, this is what it looks like when it's finished everybody see this chart I'm sure it's extremely popular um, I'll show you put in a picture of where you saw it last time and This is where I have got to with it now. So I've just finished that T. So I've now done, done three of the letters, so just three more to go. So while I was at the retreat, I stitched in this little L, you know, because at the end of the day, not much stitching goes on at a retreat. To lots of chatting. In fact, I, when I came home from the retreat last Sunday, I couldn't hardly talk. I'd laughed and chatted so much, I'd almost lost my voice. So, yeah, I wasn't working on the Monday, and uh, and I, I was I was just quiet all day. I really was. I felt really knackered, which is amazing, isn't it? Considering all I'd done all weekend was sit on my bum and chat or stitch or eat. Um, I was knackered on the Monday. Um, yeah and I just didn't want to talk so <laughs> um, so yeah so I finished this tea 
I realised as I was stitching this owl, I went to put some of the leaves in on the tree and realised one of them was completely in the wrong place. And that was, that was the, the end result was all this little bit over here had to be uh, frogged out. Otherwise it, it wouldn't have looked right. I couldn't fudge it. So, so now I've just literally started on the U. So I need to do a bit of work on that. But I do love this. I've, I've only completed the summer one so far, which I literally just took down yesterday. Because that's the end of summer now. Uh, although I don't mind autumn, to be honest. It's, it's winter that I don't like. So autumn is usually quite a nice month. Oh, quite a nice season, not month. Uh, so I'm stitching this on 28 count um, Midas by Chromatic Alchemy. And this is a 28 count linen. Um, these charts, well, the summer one anyway, it was sort of at the start of my stitchy journey and 28 count at that time was my preferred go-to. Um, I'm using all the call for colours on this. Well, the DMCs, I'm not using, this does call for two silken colours and I'm not using those. I've used the DMC conversion. Um, yeah, 28 count was kind of at the beginning of my stitchy journey. If I was to stitch them again now, I probably would have done them on 32 or even 36, actually. 36 is my sweet spot. Um, but 28 count now is quite easy stitching. So, and because I'd done summer on a 28 count, I figured I should do them all on a 28, so they're all the same size. Not that they'll all be on display together, so it doesn't really matter, but yeah. So that's where we are with autumn. Right, next. What is next? Right, let's do this one. Okay, so as I was saying, the weather turned um, really hot, really hot. And uh, it was kind of like, well, what shall I stitch on? Uh, because I want to be in the garden uh, I mean as it so happens it was too hot to actually sit in the garden I did sit out but I was under the shade we've got like a, a pergola that goes across the back of the house uh, so it's quite shady but it, it was you know I was out there on my sun lounger with my stitching um, and if I'm going to stitch outside I need to stitch on something where I don't need magnification uh, obviously, light-wise, it's brilliant because you're sitting in the sunlight. Um, so I need something that's 32 count or less. If it's 36 or more, I need magni a magnifier because I have really crap, <laughs> really crap eyesight. So, um, so my choice to take out into the garden with me uh, was one that I hadn't intended to stitch on this month, but... Um, I did for that reason because I could take it outside so I took outside to stitch on the drawn threads the kitchen garden um, because it felt an appropriately summery chart as well so that was this one I hope that's not too glary for you I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time And I think I only had one stitchy session on this outside in the garden uh, because, honest to goodness, it just got too hot. You know, I had sweaty hands, didn't want to stitch, it was too warm. Um, anyway, this is where I got to with it. So pretty much I've, I've done all of the, uh, all of, pretty much all the house, I'm just putting the windows in now and then we can move on with it. So I'm really, really pleased with that one and how it's come alert, coming along. So I'll shunt this one along in a cue snap in a minute um, so I can start doing, uh, I think we'll go with the tomatoes and carrots first. So yeah, I've nearly finished that house. Quite pleased. So this is stitched on. I bought this as a kit from the Nimble Thimble. Um, and as far as I'm aware, Chris has still got the issue. She does a lot of um, drawn thread kits. And they're a really economical way of buying um, a chart with the silks. Because Chris gives you, these are stitched in silks, a mix of MPIs and 
dinky dies for this particular one. But it's an economical way of getting the seals because rather than buying the whole skeins, um, she'll give you enough seal to complete the piece. Um, so this is, and she also provides the fabric, etc. So this is on a 32 count summer khaki by Zweigart and it is stitched one over two in like I say dinky dice etc really love it really really love it it's a really really nice summery piece so that's that one what's next let's show you this one okay so the next one I stitched on I kind of went back sampler wise I took this one to the Essex Needles retreat with me uh, I did stitch on it a little bit not masses, but a little bit. So this is Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais. This is what it looks like when it's finished. It's lovely, this. There's a, um, a stitch along going on for this one, which is hosted by uh, Somi Sarah and uh, Joanita from Stitchy Things. And... Uh, yeah, they're much further ahead than I am with it, but I'm doing my own little sale with Sue, one of my subscribers, because she was responsible for the purchase of this chart and she'd got it as well. So we decided to stitch it, although I haven't seen your progress on it, Sue. So right here I am with it. So I've been doing the border first. So I'd already filled in um you know that complete outside border and then I've gone back and I've been filling in the little leaves so that's where I am with it hope, I hope I put a picture in to show you where it was last time not that there's masses of progress and yes I know there's a couple of missing leaves down here it was just <laughs> I was started off I was stitching this in hand and now I've moved to putting it in a Q-snap and I'm about to change to putting it in a nerge frame instead. So uh, I, I missed those two out because they were in the wrong place in the Q snap, so to speak. So I do know I've got to go back and do those. But yeah, I, I stitched some more leaves on it at the retreat. That was like really easy stitching because it's just a repetitive border. So I'm stitching this on 36 count platinum by Zweigart, which is one of my favourite uh, go to fabrics and I, I don't know why I didn't centre this piece more when I started it but I didn't I've only got a two inch border over this side it'd be all right it'd be all right um I don't know why I did that <laughs> it was actually deliberate as well I could have gone much further this way and didn't so yeah so it hasn't got the widest border on it but there will be enough to frame it and if there isn't I'll just tag on an old bit of fabric and and lace it that way but yeah that's where I am with it so that's stitch one over two and I am using all of the called for threads for that one they're a mix of over dyed um over dyed cottons and um DMC but yeah let me just say with that one I've just said so part of my haul let me just show you oops oops sorry about that uh so part of my haul this time i ordered these when i got back from the essex needles retreat um somebody at the lots of ladies actually at the retreat were using nerd hoops and um and i've never really liked using hoops uh, the very first project i ever did i did use a hoop but after that i sort of discovered q snaps and scroll bars and things i don't don't tend to use a scroll bar anymore, although I'm going to have to when I start my new Chatelaine. Um, but I saw people using these nerd hoops at the retreat and I thought one of the ladies had got the whole set of them and she kindly lent me the biggest one, which is this number four hoop. Um, she said, do you want to borrow one, Elaine, and, and stitch with it? See how you get on, see if you like it. So I put Rejoice Evermore in it. And, uh, and I really liked it. I really liked it. So I came back from the retreat and I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a couple because they fit in my Lowry stand brilliant because 
sometimes I find with my Lowry, I've only got the side clamp, I haven't got the corner clamp. I keep saying I'm going to invest in the corner clamp, but I haven't. Um, but sometimes I find, you know, the key snap, after a little while, you have to keep tightening it, tightening it up a bit in the clamp because it becomes a bit loose. These are absolutely solid in my uh, Lowry stand. Brilliant. And also, if I sometimes I like to hold my project and stitch um, as well. And I find, yeah, they're so nice and light that, yeah, I like them. I couldn't get the nicest colour in the world. These are grey ones. Um, I've got these from Hobby Jobby. Uh, and I was pre-warned to make sure that I got proper nerd tubes and not imitations. And these are proper nerd tubes. But yeah, the pretty colours, they didn't have any of those in stock. So I went with the plain grey ones. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's only to hold a project, so I'm not not too bothered about it. But I can see myself getting some more of these because I really like them. And they're so nice and lightweight. And they're not very expensive either. So yeah, Hobby Jobby do all of the colours, um, generally speaking, but they just happen to be out of stock for me. So they were a bit of all that I bought as a result of going to the retreat. So thank you, Julie, for lending me your um, nerge. And yeah, I did end up buying some as a result of that. Right, next project. I've uh, got a couple more and then I've got both my new starts to show you. So the next one I did a little bit on and it was literally just a couple of hours one afternoon was my new start from last month. So this is... October arrived by Fancy Blackett. That's what it looks like when it's finished. And this I am stitching as part of the annual Fancy Blackett style that I do with Stitching Whippet Allison and Crafting Kirsty. Um, we also have Ali Stitcher, and this year we had Laurel as well that joined us. Um, I think they're all finished with fancy blacking except me. <laughs> Alison was like a whippet. Like she started later than everybody else and, and finished really fast. Laurel, I think, was the first to finish. I'm sure Ali said on my last video that she's finished now. Um, Kirsty showed hers on her last video and she hadn't got much to do either. So, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing up the rear with mine, but... I've been concentrating on other things, so I'm not really too bothered, to be honest. It won't take me too long to finish once I get really going on it, but still. So hopefully I'll put a picture in of where you saw it last time. And here I am with it now. So I've just literally added in um, the little pumpkin head person. Can't remember what what they call her. Oh, Mrs. Otis. Yeah, Mrs. Otis. So she's sharing the broom with Fancy. Um, so this I'm stitching on 36 count. Picture this plus dapple. Um, and I am using all the call for DMCs for this. Yeah, it's a really nice. All the Fancies are really nice little stitch. They really are. So I don't know what one we're going to do next year, but it is a bit of an annual thing. So, but I am quite behind compared to everybody else with mine this year. But never mind, it'll get there. It'll be done before we do the next year's sale, hopefully. Um, and then my final, uh, um, final project I worked on before I show you my new starts is also a stitch along that I'm doing with my lovely friend Stitches Sally and uh, we've been going great guns on this and I have so enjoyed doing this sail with Sally sail with Sally hey um that uh yeah I can't wait to do another one with her so we're gonna do she's doing Teresa Kogut's um one of her samplers in December and I'm gonna do it with her as well so I'm looking forward to that Right, so this is the Pink House uh, sampler by Plum Street Samplers. This is what it looks like when it's finished. 
and I'll put a picture in the way you saw it last time. And I made this one my other whip go for this month. So this was number one, which was a stitch on a sampler for five days for me. And I ended up choosing this one. So, um, yeah, hopefully I ha did I say I put a picture in of where you saw it last time? I think I did. This is where I am with it now. So I have put this one back in the queue snap, guys. So all the bottom part is done. Um, and now I'm working on this top bit. So since you last saw it, I put in this tree. Um, I've started putting in the centres of the flowers on the tree. But um, I haven't quite finished those yet. Uh, I ha am changing this one out um, and putting my mum's name across the middle. I haven't started that bit yet, but I have put her date of birth in over here. And then I've started on the verse and I have made changes to the verse. I told you last time that I was going to and I've gone ahead and done that. But I've personalised it slightly more than I was going to. So I've started off with, so the original verse says the loss of a father is much, the loss of a mother is more, the loss of Christ is such, no other can restore. Now, as I explained in my last video, I'm not particularly religious. My mother certainly wasn't. And so, you know, I wanted this as like a piece to remember my mum particularly. Um, so I didn't didn't want to chart it with a, I didn't want to stitch it with a religious verse. So I've kept the basics of the verse, but I swapped it, swapped the wording about a bit. So my one says, as you can see, the loss of my pets is much, the loss of a father is more, and maybe I should have put the loss of my father, but I I didn't, and I think it'll be okay. And then I'm going to put the loss of a mother is such, no other can restore, because for me that, you know, that really is the case. So, um, so that's the way I'm going to finish off. Now, I've nearly finished it, uh, and a couple of you asked me, um, to chart that for you uh, and I know one lady has been in touch with me as soon as I finish stitching it I will chart it for you anybody who wants it just email me one lady like I say already has let me know and I will chart it I have started charting it for you once I finish stitching it and I make sure it's right because um, I have if you look on here the wording here on the third row down is slightly more indented uh, and I haven't done that with mine. I'm, I've left it, I'm just on that third row and I've left it the same as these. But the bottom row I might indent slightly because it's not going to be any different really from than the chart. So as soon as I finish charting it and I know that it fits okay um, and it looks right, I will... I'll send you the chart, that, that bit of the chart for it, so you can swap yours out. I started a bit on the border up the top. I know Sally's finished with the border now. She's gone all the way round and hers meets. If mine doesn't, I'll have to fudge it because I'm not going to pick it out unless it looks too terrible. Um, so, yeah, so I want to get this wording finished next and then I'll probably go back to the border, I think, and then... I'm going to put my mum's name in last. Um, and what I'm thinking of doing, so on here it says Mary Jane Carver. I'm swapping it out to my mum's name. which So my mum's name was Margaret. So for the Mary Jane bit, it's the same amount of letters, but obviously without that gap between Mary and Jane. So I'm just, I am going to start in the same place as this is charted. And I'm going to put Margaret in. And then my mum's surname was Downs. Um, with an E so six letters again the same as Carver so that should be fairly easy but where I haven't got this gap between the words here I am gonna maybe put something some little motif that reminds me of my mum at the end of the name I'm not sure what it will be yet I'll probably pick something from out of Brenda Key's sampler book because I've got that and there's lots of nice things in there. So I might find 
I might put a heart in there or something like that. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so I'm really loving stitching this. One more little look at where we are with it. Um, so this is on 36 count platinum by Zweigart. And I am stitching this one over two using all of the over, called for over dyed cottons with the exception of Weeks Diverse Brick. I'm using Gentle Arts Ruby Slipper, which is this deep red colour here, I think. Yeah, that's where that one is. So I think overall Sally and I are about in the same place because like I say, she's gone on and carried on with that border and, um, and I've come down and done some of the birding. Right, so that's that one. Then I had two new starts. One of them was planned and has been planned for uh, since June and the other one was kind of a bit of a last minute thing. So the one that I had planned to start and I did start on the 1st of September is one that I am doing with Teresa, Little Stitcher and um, Susie, Persaud and some other people are stitching this as well. So I know Andrea Bowen who is a stitchy science technician on uh, Instagram. She's stitching this because she was at our retreat last week and I got the benefit of seeing it. She's done a lot more with it than I have. Um, I know Lindsay from Blushing Pink Stitches. She's doing an Afghan, but she's doing a Christmassy one. So yeah, so there's a few Afghans going about. So the Afghan that I'm stitching is a witch out one called Family Farm. <coughs> Excuse me. This is what it looks like when it's finished. And I had the pleasure of seeing this on the wall at the Nimble Thimble, stitched up, and I fell in love with it. And so did Teresa. So we both ended up buying it. Um, I did start it, like I say, we were down for a 1st of September start with this one because um, um we decided it was going to be too hot to start it before that. <laughs> uh, we should have started it in August when the weather was horrendous. Instead, started it the 1st of September and we had a heat wave. So <laughs> I didn't really want to stitch with a big blanket on my lap. But this is going to be nice, cosy stitching for when the weather is cold. Uh, this is what I've done with mine. I'm not going to pull the whole thing out but th this is my humble start on this it is huge it's absolutely huge this is being stitched on 18 count fireside i think it's called or is it half side i can't remember anyway it's being stitched on the called for fabric um and you stitch this uh four strands over two so in actual fact the 18 count becomes nine count which is believe me easy peasy stitching <laughs> it really is easy peasy stitching it seems very strange to stitch with like four threads um the only exception to the rule so i swapped my white out i did not want to use blank because that was the called for and i don't like it so i swapped it out for sulky and instead of using four strands of sulky because it's that bit bulky, I've used three. So I've done three strands of sulky, but four strands of DMC. The rest of it I've used the call for DMC. So yeah, a very humble start on the first block, but it is a start. And it it was ages before I put a stitch into it because I kept looking at it and. Um, I'd made a note because Chris at the Nimble Thimble said, well, you know, make sure that when you start, you do your squares, portrait style, not landscape style, because you'll be the wrong way round. So I was conscious of doing that. And then it tells you to come, I think it's come down three from the top and come in two from the side. And I'm like, OK, and I counted it about 20 times. I've checked I'd got enough squares going that way, enough squares going down as to where I was going to actually start it and yeah that was my start so yep long way to go with that one but i really enjoyed the first few stitches that i put into it right 
And my final new start um, is one that I've started with my friend Gina from Gina Stitches. So I think I showed you in my last video that I'd just seen completely enabled on Instagram. I'd seen a couple of people's finishes of the Lola Crow stitch along, mystery stitch along that she did called Greenhouse of Oddities. And I was like, oh, pretty blown away by it but at that point people had nearly finished the sale was nearly finished I think they were on part 10 of an 11 part sale and uh, and I bought it I was just like oh, oh I so need to, to do that and then Gina said well I really want to stitch that as well so we decided we'd start it at the Essex Needles Retreat because I hadn't got any fabric that I felt quite right about, so I needed to pick some fabric. Um, I've got all pretty much most of my threads, but I bought a few, the outstanding ones that I needed from uh, Sarah of Marnie's Mixed Bag while I was at the retreat. And I bought myself some fabric from Megan. So this is haul as well as a new start, if you like. So obviously there's no before picture. This is my humble start from the retreat. So I've just started with the in the middle with the top of the greenhouse. So I've started middle top with this one. It does go in pattern keeper, so I have got it in pattern keeper. Um, I can't remember what percentage I've completed, but it's not much. This is the fabric I decided to go with. This is 36 counts. I'm stitching this one over two in DMC. Um, I really like the fabric. I have an appropriate Agnes need that needle minder on this. But yeah, really, really enjoying it so far. This was just a bit of a Sunday morning start. But yeah, really like it. So that is my, that is all my stitching. Um, so I'm quite pleased with the amount I've done um, over the last over the last four weeks. Right, okay, let's move on to haul and stitchy kindness. So, pretty, I think, bar a couple of charts that I ordered from one uh, no not one two three stitch arts did i order them from arts and designs arts and designs almost all of my haul and stitchy kindness came to me via the retreat okay so and and i'm gonna it will be a bit of a mix about things that people have so kindly given me i was just blown away actually by the amount of um bits and pieces that people gave me this time um, as well as purchases from um, that I made at the retreat or not at the retreat as the case may be. Right, I'm going to start off with this. So this was a bit of stitchy kindness from one of the ladies that came to the retreat. Um, so we had our first American visitor to uh, our retreat this time. Absolutely lovely, lovely, lovely lady. Um, I, I, we had such a laugh. She is such a nice person. She's um, currently holiday, holidaying in England and doing a little tour around, but she came to our retreat for the weekend. And uh, yeah, hopefully she had a good time. She was so, everybody loved her. She's such a nice person. But anyway, she, um, she brought with me, with her, uh, something that I'd asked her to get for me in the US, um, which obviously I paid her for. But then she gave me some things as well, which was just so kind of her. She made me a little pillow. And it's quite a blingy little pillow. You know me and I love a bit of bling. So but I've, I've only ever had one other stitchy thing that's been made for me. Um, and that was a Christmas card that Sue stitched for me last year, which I've still got um, and will go out again at Christmas. Um, but this is the first time somebody's ever given me a stitchy pillow or a little small. Um, and I'm so chuffed with this little cup. 
cuppa and the little macarons with it. How sweet is that? And she's finished it off with this blingy trim and then um, a really pretty backing fabric on the back. So I absolutely love it. Love it. Thank you, Mary Ann, for making that for me. It, honestly, it was just... So, yeah, I'm going to put it back where I had it before I started filming this morning, which is with my other pillows and things over there. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, she also, I also got given some threads, some were from um, Marianne and some I got from, we played a game called Pass the Stash. Um, and as part of that, I got some threads for that as well. So I got a mixture of all sorts, so I'm not going to show you them all individually, but um, the I got uh, mainly from Marianne, she gave me some um, silks. So there was some Krynix, Silk Moray, Moray, I think that's how you say it. There was some Soir d'Alger, which I've never used before, so I'm really excited to use that. There's several skeins of that, actually. Um, yeah, she gave me lots of different Krynix silks to use. And then I also got a couple of Gentle Art threads that were in my past the stash. One I've never heard of before called Mo's Sale, which is a really nice variegated yellow. Um, and also uh, a hand dyed thread from Joja Reed Designs, which is also a really pretty colour. So thank you, thank you, thank you for those. Um, I shall add those to my thread stash. And then um, I I purchased this uh, back in June when we were at the Wrexham retreat. Uh, Agnes Little Minders had put up um, some new minders and I didn't think I'd got one. And Susie very kindly purchased me. She said, I, I've got on the site, I'll get one for you. And I said, just get me any one, basically. Later on, I found I had got one, so I ended up with um, another one of Agnes's minders. Uh, and I said to Susie at the time, well, when it comes, just bring it to the September retreat with you. So she did. So I got another one of Agnes's little bee needle minders. I've already got one, which is slightly different, is different to this one. So now I've got another one of those to add to my Agnes collection. Um, I got given quite a lot of chocolate at the retreat, uh, which, thank you very much, <laughs> I'm gradually wazing my way through it, but I also got given one of these, now, I've not had one of these uh, thread cutters before, but yeah, I, I really like it, thank you. So that's really nice. And one of our ladies who's, it was her first ever retreat, she very kindly gave me some chocolate, but she gave me some blingy pens. Now I know these are not stitchy related as such, but uh, I just wanted to let you know, Sharon, but they do work. Cause she said, I don't know if they work, but I saw them and I knew from your videos, you said you like bling. And yes, I do. And these are really blingy, and yes, they do work. So thank you very much. So I got those. Um, also, as part of the pass the stash parcel game that we played, um, as well as some threads, I got a piece of fabric. And this is a 32 count chromatic alchemy piece. It's a fat ape called turquoise. They are. Oh. That's blowing out if I bring it too close to the window. So this is like browns and purples. It's really pretty. And I do have a chart that I think would look quite good on this as it happens. So whoever whoever's parcel I won, thank you very much. I really like that piece of fabric. And then uh, as part of that... Um, also part of that stash parcel, 
and this is kind of almost like it was meant to be really there was a chart in there as well and it's uh by brenda gervais and bearing in mind nobody knows what parcel you're going to end up with because you're passing the parcel it's a bit like the parcel parcel game so you don't know who's going to get your parcel or who's you're going to get but the one i got also included this chart which is called Shepherd Sampler by Brenda Gervais. This is what it looks like. Now that's the perfect chart for me, isn't it? Look, it's got sheep on it. And it's a little sampler. So yeah, that definitely came to the right person. <laughs> so thank you very much, whoever's little parcel I ended up getting. But yeah, perfect chart for me. So thank you. So I got that. I also got given, this was um, on the D stash and it belonged to the lovely Susie um, and she gave me this. So this is Hello Spring by Plum Street Samplers. I'd already, I've already got the winter one. So now I've got the spring one as well. So yeah, I picked that up. I then got given uh, by the lovely Jan, who was on my table. She asked me if I wanted any of her charts that she'd got for the D stash table. Um, and I chose this one. So this is by the Scarlet House and it's called Entwined Hearts. Oops, that's a bit glary, sorry about that. But I like this, I like the fabric that it's on. And I love me a Scarlet House anyway, so so I got that. Um, and then lovely Mary um, gave me, she stitched this chart and I saw her finish. In fact, um, it's on, I've done a little video of the finishing table uh, and you'll see it on there. This is a Jeanette Douglas designer, it's Vintage Birds. And Mary's finish of this is amazing. She's done it on a completely different fabric and it looks brilliant. But she said to me, anybody want this chart? And I was like, yep, I'll have that. I'd love to stitch it. So I got that one. And then Jan gave me this one. So this is a Blackbird design. So this is all for thine. Love it, love it. Love me a blackbird chart. So I have that one that was gifted to me. And then Jan gifted me this. And I was like, oh, blown away, absolutely blown away. So this is um, one of the tote bags that, Matt, that uh, Nicola Parkman from Hands Across the Sea was selling in her shop. So Jan gave me this one. I'm, a, it, I'm just amazed. I love it. Absolutely love it and I can't wait to use it. It was so generous of you, Jan. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, it's a brilliant bag. Funny enough, I'd nearly bought these and then decided by the time I went, I'd made up my mind to buy them. They'd gone out of stock. So oh, thank you. I love it. So yeah, so that was gifted to me as well. So honestly, I, I, I'm just blown away. Seriously, just blown away. Oh, and finally, uh, Mary Ann brought over with her from the States. She'd picked this up in a thrift shop um, and she asked on our Facebook group, our retreat group, whether anybody wanted her to purchase it for them. It was $8 and it was um, a box of DMC. There's a lot of threads in here for $8 and they're in really good condition. They don't smell or anything. They haven't been around anybody who smokes. Um, and I said, can I have those <laughs> please? And, uh, and I was gonna pay her for them, but she gave them to me, which was so kind. So yes, I've got a box of DMC to add to my stash of supplies. Right, and then of course I did purchase some things as well. Um, so I bought another project bag. So I bought this at the retreat. This one is from Jess Get Stitching. And it's really nice. I really liked it because it's got little 
fairies and bees and things on the back and then it's got the sparkly vinyl on the front and I really like this this zipper as well which is like all different colours so I purchased that from Jess I will put all of the vendors you know all the people that I purchased from this time down below um, I then let me do fabric actually next so uh, I got fabric as well so Megan from Coffee Craft Fabrics was there uh, I got this piece of 36 count I got a fat quarter of this I don't know what I'm going to put on it, but I really liked it. So that was a 36 count linen from Megan and it's gorgeous. I had already pre-ordered from Megan a piece of fabric. So um, if, if you watch my last video, you'll know that it's my intention to stitch Saga by Long Dog Samplers. I showed you the chart on my last video and I've decided to do it as one of my birthday starts um, and Alison the Stitching Whippy is going to stitch it with me for my birthday. So I asked Megan because it's so enormous whether she could do me a piece of fabric I'd got the floss that I wanted to use, but I wanted to know if Megan could do me some fabric to go with a particular silk that I want to use for this. And she's done that. So this is a 40 count even weave. Let me just show you how big this fabric is. It's massive. <laughs> And this is 40 count. So yeah, I decided to go with an even weave because um, I find with these long dogs, because they're sort of, you know, quite symmetrical designs, etc. This I find the stitches look a bit, just a bit more even, uh, you know, obviously on an even weave. So, so that's what I went with. And the, I'll just show you the silk that I'm going to, I've had this silk in my stash for a very long time. So this is a silk by Mrs. Sadas. It's called Scale. I do believe she still does this particular one. Um, and I, it's like these turquoise colour, turquoise and lilacs. And I think it goes really well with this fabric. So that is uh, my birthday start with Alison Stitching Whippet. Well, one of my birthday starts. There will be more. Um, yeah. And then um, I asked Marianne if she could bring over with her a piece of fabric for me from the US. Uh, because, you know, I do order some stuff from 123 Stitch because their uh, shipping cost is really reasonable. But... For the majority of things in the US, the shipping charge is so expensive. Um, so I asked Marianne um, if she could get me a piece of fabric from Fabrics by Stephanie. So she did. I wanted a piece of haunting. Um, this is a 36 count linen. This is a fat quarter. And this is for a particular project that I have in mind. I've just got to decide what floss I want yet, but I am going to stitch on this fabric the Enchanted Quaker by Luminous Fibre Arts. I don't know what floss I'm going to use yet, but I absolutely, I saw this fabric. Um, Stacey the 911 stitch has showed this fabric ages ago on her video uh, and I loved it. I thought, oh, I've got to get a piece of that. So Mary Ann kindly brought it over with her from the US. So yeah, this is Haunting by Fabrics by Stephanie. It's a stunning piece of fabric. So that is at some point going to have that Quaker chart on it. Love it. Just need to decide on the floss for that. Um, and then I did buy a couple of charts from 
uh, arts and design basically because we played bingo at the retreat uh, and I ordered some charts as prizes for the bingo table um, so not only did I order the bingo prizes but I just had to buy a couple of charts myself of course so I got Pinebury Lane's All Good, All Good Witches which uh, is this one of this year's fancy blackies that they've done I think this came out on Needlework Market. So we've got two fancy blackets. <laughs> so I bought that one. Don't know whether whether my usual sale ladies want to consider that one for next year's start. Um, and the other one I bought, and I've had this, an eye on this one for a very long time and not pulled the trigger. Um, it's an older chart so this is a Barbara Anna designs and I haven't got any Barbara Annas I've got one freebie I think as a pdf that's it that's all I've got um, but this is all creatures great and small it's really big but I really love it for all the farmyard animals on it and I know lots most of you will have seen this one I'm sure but look at all the animals on there love it love it love it and i have seen this one stitched up uh, and it looks fantastic i think my friend jan has done this one it looks amazing so that is that that is all of my purchasing um so plans wise uh i've got one more day to stitch on that autumn project I am going to try and I've got a thousand stitches to do on cheese delivery. I am going to try and fit in stitching on some more of my samplers. I haven't showed it to you this time because my progress was neg negligible, but I have stitched a little tiny bit on Morris Dancer since I last saw you, but it just wasn't worth showing you this time. Um, so I might go back to stitching that, but I also am conscious that I really want to stitch on the four samplers that I haven't touched for a little while actually so I might I don't know we'll see we'll see what I'm I'm in the mood for and then obviously Jessie Marie will uh pull out the numbers for next month um tomorrow tomorrow or the next day tomorrow or Monday Monday maybe I think she pulls them on the 25th I could be wrong um okay so that that's all my stitching for you so if you're leaving me here thank you very much for coming and spending some time with me I really appreciate it and um, and I hope to see you all again if you've got any questions for me please leave them in uh, the comments and or DM me um, and I'll, I'll answer you I'm not the quickest to answer in usually but I will answer you um, yeah so thank you for spending time with me okay so i'm gonna give you just my little life update and my book review and i'm really excited to give you my book review this time right so life update okay so the life update is nearly all, all about the house <laughs> oh dear oh dear i was so glad to go to a retreat last weekend because i i'd you know I'm a pretty patient person, but I've just about had enough now, basically. Oh, so we were supposed to move on the 19th of September. So about two weeks ago now, I got a phone call from uh, a state agent to say it's not going to happen on the 19th. I was like, OK, why not? And he said, um, basically, the people that we're buying the house from... Um, they're relocating as well and the council where they're relocating to are behind with doing all their local searches because they've just changed their computer system um, so their searches haven't been completed yet which means that you know we're all hanging around still waiting so he said to me you know best case will be end of September but probably after that so we're talking October so I, at the moment I haven't even gone with a date because I just don't know um you know I'm not gonna I won't start badgering until the end of next week but 
it's got to happen next month because, well, uh, otherwise we'll be in all sorts of problems. You know, my husband's due to start a new job at the beginning of October. Um, so fortunately, his new employer's fairly understanding and has put that back a little bit. Um, I've actually got an interview. I've decided that I would quite like to work part time. Um, and in actual fact, a couple of things have popped up for me to do in the meantime. So I'm due to now finish at the hotel on Wednesday next week on the 27th. That's my last day. You know, my my hotel had been really good. My boss kept me on for an extra month, which has been good. Um, so, but, you know, I, I need to finish now because my lady who's replacing me needs to take over, really. And uh, and also, I, I, yeah, it's just easier now if I finish on Wednesday. Anyway, in the meantime, I picked up a bit of um, a bit of work, if you like. So um, my sister works for somebody who started their own business uh, and her business is taken off a bit. And um, and she needed somebody from an HR perspective to write some policies for her and um, to draw up some employment contracts and, you know, just generally give us some advice around the employment of people because she hadn't really had to do that before uh, and what she needed to do legally and all that kind of thing. So, um so I said to my sister, well, look, you know, if she wants some help in a minute, I'm going to have nothing to do. Uh, and I'm quite happy to kind of pick that up for her. So, yes, I'm, I'm next week. Once I finish with the hotel, I'm going to do a bit of a bit of work for her. Um, not masses. It's only like a couple of days of work. But it did make me think, well, if I like it. You know, maybe I might consider working for myself and doing some HR work for maybe startups and, and that kind of thing. Because I've certainly got enough experience to do it. Um, so, yeah. So if anybody knows anyone that's in the market for some HR advice um, and would like to give me some work, I, I might well be up for that. So, uh, so I'm going to do a bit of that. And then... We have an event that runs at the hotel. It's nothing to do with stitching, but obviously I organise along with Teresa Little Stitch at the Essex Needles retreats, and you know we've organised a few of them now. We're 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 quite veterans or organising an event. Anyway, we have an event at the hotel which was about to be cancelled. It's an annual event. Um, and it's for a group of ladies. It's a bit of a bigger group than, I mean, my stitchy retreats are a maximum of 70 people. And this particular event's for about 100 people. Uh, but anyway, they haven't got an organiser for it. And the ladies that run it were about to jack it in, basically, because it is, it is you know, quite a lot of work. I find it pretty enjoyable, to be fair. But it can be a lot of work kind of putting together payment plans and, you know, organising all the things in the background, the food and and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyway, they were going to give up on it. And I said, uh, I said to work, well, look, you know, I, I organise the stitchy weekends. If if they want to pay me to organise their weekend for them, their annual thing that they do once a year, then I'll, I'll do it for a fee. So um, so it looks like I've picked up that to do as well. So I've got a couple of little things going on and I'm beginning to think, well, do I want to go and work for somebody else or shall I just, you know, work for myself a bit? I, you know, I don't need to earn masses of money. I don't need to work loads, um, but I would like to do some work and and both of those things, both organising events and uh, and the HR side of things, I really enjoy. They're, they're the two things that I know about. So anyway, so we shall see how that one goes. Um, so, yeah, so I've got that to think about as well. 
anyway so that's where i am at the moment with the house so when i get an update i'll let you know um when i see you again around that i'll let you know i don't know whether i'll film from here next whether it will be at the new house i don't know so you know i'm just gonna have to leave that one a bit open at the moment right okay let's go on to books so um since i last saw you i finished a book i've just gone to my kindle uh so the book that i finished was a book by melanie hamrick and it's called first position and it's a book set in the world of ballet basically it's a book about uh, a couple of ballerinas in the North American Ballet Company. Um, it was okay. It was okay. It talks quite a lot about the tough world of being a ballerina um, or a ballet dancer in general. Um, it was all right. It was a bit boring in places, in my opinion. Uh, but it was readable and I probably would give it a free, free stars three yeah and so i did find it a bit of a slog to read in the end um and then and then i didn't quite know i started to read the maiden which is the next one in the cynthia harrod eagles moreland dynasty series but i still felt like i need a bit of a break from those at the minute so i picked up another book and nobody had told me about this book before and yet, funnily enough, um, Morty from uh, Mad Morty and the Brom talked about this book on their latest video. Uh, and I'd started reading it at that point. Absolutely blown away. So I've nearly finished this now. So the book that I'm talking about is called Fourth Wing and it's by Rebecca Yarris. And I know lots of people have already read this book. It is undoubtedly one of the best books that I've read this year and I haven't even finished it yet I absolutely love it um, it's brilliant absolutely brilliant <clears throat> it's so good I ha like I say I haven't quite finished it but I have already pre-ordered the second book uh, it, which comes out on the 7th of November November I'm trying to think what it's called because it hasn't come up on my Kindle at the minute because it's on pre-order. Like I say, it's on pre-order. It comes out on the 7th of November. I think it's called, it might be the Iron Claw or something like that. Anyway, I, I, if you like fantasy books, if you like dragons, this is definitely the book for you. And one thing that did make me smile, Anita, if you're watching this, so Anita is the Violet Stitcher, and she stitches lots of dragons. Don't know if you read as well, Anita, but the heroine in this book is called Violet, funnily enough. So um, maybe that's a book you should read if you haven't already. So yeah, the Fourth Wing, Rebecca Yaros, five star plus for me for definite and i haven't even finished it um also another book that comes out and i've pre-ordered this one as well on tuesday this coming week on the 26th of september is the next book by ken follett in the kingsbridge series so any he's there are four books in the series at the minute the first book in the series is uh, Pillars of the Earth, which if you haven't read the book, you may have seen the TV series. Um, it's a brilliant series. It's set in Kingsbridge um, and it goes through the ages, through the Middle Ages. And I think we're on to like revolutionary times now. I can't think what the book's called, but the fifth one is out on Tuesday. Can't wait for that to come out either. So the Moreland Dynasty might be taking the back seat for a little while in a minute because as soon as I finish the fourth wing, I'm going to go and read the Ken Follett book. So, yeah, on the book front, things are looking very good indeed. Right, that really is all I have for you this time. And we have been quite a long video, but I sort of expected that to be the case, to be honest. 
Um, I have put a little video or I will put a little video at the end of the finishing table at last week's retreat. Um, I know a couple of people, a couple of floss tubers have already spoken about the retreat last week. I know uh, Catherine from Cat V Stitches, she talked about it a bit during her most recent video. Uh, and Lindsay at Blushing Pink Stitches, she um, has done a little vlog of um, her weekend experience at the retreat. And she has included the, uh, the finishing table as part of that. So Lindsay's video is much better than my little clips that I've taken at the end, but mine are just there if you haven't seen hers. Um, and Teresa has filmed the retreat as well, but Teresa's away on a well-deserved holiday at the moment. Um, and uh, she probably won't upload that video until she gets back, of course. So, like I said, I don't know when you'll see me next. I hope probably maybe two or three weeks particularly as I'm not working now apart from those odd little bits that I've told you about you might you might get a video from me a little bit quicker um, or I might get a moving date and you might not see me till the end of the month if we don't move in, in October I think we we yeah we we've got serious problems so um, yeah hopefully keep your fingers crossed for me guys please uh, we really do need to move by before the end of October. So thank you for coming and joining me today. And I hope you all have a brilliant few stitchy weeks. Um, you know, we're into autumn now, a lovely time of year as far as I'm concerned. I can't believe it's nearly a year ago now that I was visiting uh, Massachusetts and, and seeing the fall and the lovely trees. And it was just amazing. Um, and if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I hope you're having a really lovely springtime. Um, and anyway, I'll, I'll see you all again soon. So take care, guys. Happy stitching and bye for now. OK, so starting over here, we have this gorgeous mermaid. I can't really remember. I know it's a hate, but I can't remember who the designer is. It might be a Donna Gelsinger um, chart, actually. I'm sure one of you will correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, isn't it beautiful? And this is a real economic way of finishing something as well, isn't it? When you've got, it's difficult, I think, sometimes when you've got a big chart, we can't always afford to feel, frame everything. And, um, yeah, this, this one, I think, is a really nice way of framing something or finishing something off in a bit of a more economic way. So there, there she is. She's gorgeous. Okay. So moving on over here then. So here we have a flat fold. I think this is Plum, Plum Street Samplers, E. Crow. And then on the flip side, some of you will recognise this finish. Um, we have Buzz Off, which is the partner piece to this. And those of you that wa watch Cat V Stitches will know that that's one of Cat's finishes. And then we also have, more recently, Catherine showed on her channel this one. So here we have Sleepy Hollow by the Cricut Collection, finished as as it is recommended to finish it, it's a trifold. And like I say, if you've watched Catherine's channel, then you will have seen Catherine's tutorial on how to, how to do this particular, finish this particular piece. Beautiful, beautiful, big bit of stitch in there. It's a bit deceptive actually, there's far more stitching involved in that than you would think. And then over here we have this gorgeous, gorgeous full coverage wolf chart. I don't know who that one's by, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous chart. And we have this one here. And this gorgeous one, vintage birds. 
which I think is this a Jeanette Douglas chart, really gorgeous, on a really lovely piece of fabric that one as well. And then this cute little chart here, super super cute. Here we have Silk Creek samplers, very autumnal project there. And then look at these, aren't they so, so intricate, really, really cute. Some real, real detailed, tiny, tiny stitching. Even to the little band on the bag. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then we have these cute little piggies. So, so sweet. They're so cute. A little pillow. Very cute. Some gorgeous apples. some dragons here we have a Randall Spangler for coverage also gorgeous for those of you with stitch full coverage know that Randall Spangler probably a bit famous for his little draglings Mirabilia She's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Then we have these cute little cuties here. A whole series of these. Also really, really cute. It's one of the Tiny Town series. I haven't stitched any of these by uh, heart in hand, but um, that clearly is the late, the summertime one, the beachy one. Really cute. And then underneath that we have Mary Snow. Oh, look at these, look at those gorgeous swans, absolutely stunning. Lovely, lovely, lovely colours. And then we have a lavender and lace, I do believe. Look at her. She's gorgeous. She's she looks really almost 3D. Beautiful. It's a gorgeous beading. Go. really pretty pretty rose and then underneath that we have this gorgeous chart and look at the colors in this it's really really autumnal and this was I think a color conversion that the lady did herself fantastic colors really lovely Lovely stock in here. I do think I think this might be a dimensions. I could be wrong, and I'm sure if I am wrong, one of you will correct me. It's beautiful. And then we have Spring by the Cricket Collection. <coughs> oh no, that's too glary. I have to leave that laid down. And then underneath here we have this gorgeous sampler. I really like the alphabet on this one. Look at that gorgeous E. And underneath. Beautiful, beautiful. I'll 
I'll tell you what, I'm looking at some people's backs here and they're like, mine, mine look shameful in comparison. Seriously, they do. Oh dear. And how about this? How cute is this? Here we go. This is Roses of Provence by Mirabilia. Really recognisable. Here we have a full coverage. And then this is. Okay, and then we've got a couple of Barbara Annas. And they're not quite finished yet, but Theresa bought a chatelaine of evening in the park. Um, and she's been getting some of the ladies at the retreat to stitch a couple of the trees for her. As you can see, a couple of people have stitched trees for her. But yeah, isn't it stunning? Stunning, stunning. She hasn't got too much more to go on this one before it's finished, actually. But it is beautiful. This little one over here, so cute. Christmas. Is she? Nice Quaker sampler. Here we have Bella Filipina Gritter Gold Brew. A mini Chatelet. Gorgeous, gorgeous. Look at this one with all the little charms on it, isn't it cute? And then this one on the fabric flare fabric that backs it is really, really nice as well. Gorgeous. Full coverage, The Witcher. Shepherd's Bush stocking. Here we go, Lisa Parker full coverage there. Look at this one, the really intricate chart. Pull this one out to show you so you can see it properly. Stunning, stunning, lots of work in, involved in that one. That one was stitched by Alison, who's the stitching whippet on Instagram for those of you that follow Alison. I know lots of people do. Then we have another stocking, really bright and cheerful one here. And then this stamped kit. Look at the colours, beautiful. 
Okay. And that's the finishing table, guys. There's some absolutely amazing, amazing stitching on display there. Really, really lovely. So, and of course, none of them are mine because I forgot to bring mine. So, anyway, hope you enjoyed seeing those and um, see you all soon. Bye.